I want to use this enclosure, but I can't decide who. Do you want to help me? Okay, everybody, uh, Dave from Area Arachnids. Um, I'm having a hard time. I really want to use this enclosure. Um, again, I had ordered two of these. Sorry for the shaking this there. I'm trying to focus. Um, one came in broke. The whole entire lid was broke. So now I'm just using the bottom as like a storage thing. What I'm going to do with the bottom uh, one is use it for uh, slings. So we'll put a bunch of sling enclosures in there. And then I'll just be able to grab that whole thing instead of trying to grab, you know, two or three vials at a time. It'll make it much easier on myself. Um, but I can't decide who to put in here. There are so many different tarantulas I could put in here, and I'm not really quite sure. Now, this is the European style, you know, so you have the hinge there in the plastic, so you can open up the small side like that for feeding, or you can leave the small side down and open up this side. So there, there's a handful, I mean more than a handful, of tarantulas that I'm considering putting in here, and I just can't figure out who. Um, nothing old world in this because the holes are, you know, they're not very, very high. The enclosure is not super tall. It's, it's just under three inches total. So it's only going to have, you know, maybe an inch of substrate in there. So it's going to be something that, you know, I could put a hide in here and, and they'll stay in the hide without any issue. So, you know, maybe a, a brachypelma or a gramostola, um, maybe my pamphibedius. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the whole entire lot of ones I'm considering putting in here. And then what I'd like for you guys to do down below in the comment section is comment which one you think I should put in here. And uh, we'll see how the comments go. And uh, maybe whoever has the most votes, then, then that's who we'll use. Or if somebody could give me a good argument of why I should use the, uh, the one that they chose. That would probably be the best thing is why did you choose the one that you chose and uh, let me know why. And... Uh, we'll do another video when we uh, we get whatever one we decide in here. So uh, stay tuned here for a second. I'll get all the ones down I'm considering, and you guys can help me figure it out. Okay, so my advice is if you get a piece of paper and a pencil, start writing down what you you, you know you think would be good for that enclosure because there's there's five in baseball enclosures, and there's probably about seven or eight, maybe even nine, maybe even ten in softball enclosures that can move up. So, you know, I don't want you to just pick on your favorite species, but one that you really think would benefit from the move and that enclosure. Um, again, I, I am perplexed to which one I want to do because every time I say, oh, yeah, this one, then I think of a different one, then I think of a different one, then I think of a different one. So let's start. These are all the baseball cubes, okay? This is a Bumba Cabocla, okay? And, and all five of these tarantulas are basically the same size. Uh, the Lassiodora Kluge, which will be coming up here in a second, is a little bit smaller. Uh, the Cerecopalma species Boquette. Okay, that, the Bumba Cabocla is about the same size as this one. Now, if you notice, though, the Bumba Cabocla likes to burrow. The species Boquette doesn't and hasn't. Hasn't even tried to dig it. Just dug a little indention in the corner but never sits in it. Uh, here we have the Pamphibedius antineus. Now, this one is dug out all underneath there. Um, the dirt's probably a little bit eh, right around the same height as what I would probably put in the other enclosure with a different type of hide, a little bit longer. Um, so, you know, you can consider that, but this one has definitely dug out underneath that piece of wood and, and likes to stay underneath there. Here's the Kluge, um, tad bit smaller, okay? So it wasn't really one that's high on my list that I'd like to move, but definitely if you guys feel that this is one that should move, then we will. Now, keep in mind, these all are the Cerecopelma, the Pamphibedius, this one here are all going to, grow rather quickly, not super quickly, but rather quickly. The Bumba Cabocla is no uh, no lax at, at growing either. Um, here is the Homoyoma species blue. Now you can see this one needs a, needs an upgrade one way or another. So it's either going into this enclosure or it's going to a softball type enclosure, which we'll have, we have two available right now. And then we'll have one available if we move one of the tarantulas out of there into this other type of enclosure. Uh, so that's those five. So I'm going to pause you here, and then we're going to bring down the ones from the softball enclosures that I'm considering. And then, again, you guys can comment down below. I won't rehouse anything today, probably not for a couple days, um, but I would like to get something in that by Sunday. You know, and here we are on Friday, so it's not a lot of time for you guys to watch. 
uh, I'd like to at least hear some some opinions. Remember, just don't don't pick your favorite one, but pick one that you think would be the best fit to move in there. I really like this tarantula. It's it it, it would look good in a softball enclosure too. So um, I love these guys. The Homeoma species blue. All right, let's get down those. I'm not saying that because that's what I want you guys to pick. I'm just saying I just I have two of these and and they're they're just a lot of fun. Hey guys, so there's eleven here that can move into this enclosure, but I also have four of the longer clear acrylic uh, 124 scale die cast enclosures also that what we don't pick out of here could possibly move into those. Uh, so that's kind of my goal is to move some of these things out of the baseball enclosures into the softball enclosures, so many things out of softball enclosures into the uh, 124 scale uh, acrylics. So we have here the, oh yeah, the hiding now. Apolopa species Columbia large. Uh, it's right there. Um, this one is is considerable, but um, I think this one may be a candidate to move into one of the larger, longer enclosures. Um, only because the the substrate depth in this one over here probably won't uh, be what I want it to be. And uh, after putting in anchor points for webbing, we may lose the ability to open and close that enclosure. So. Uh, but it is a consideration, so, you know, we have that one. We have a couple Brachypelmas here. Here is the Baumgartenny. Um, either one of these would be good candidates for that because they, they're not really diggers. Um, so we, we can use either one of these. So Brachypelma Baumgartenny. Brachypelma Homori. We have a couple of Gramostolas here. Here's the one that's sold as the Rosea RCF that, um, based on what I'm looking at. Come on, focus for me, buddy. Focus for me. Please focus. Doesn't want to focus. Come on now. You have such a hard time. <laughs> no, it's not going to do it for me. I don't know why. It just doesn't want to focus for me. Anyway, you have the Gramostola Rosea, the RCF, as that was sold. And then you have, which would be the Gramostola Portieri, which is basically a Gramostola Rosea DCF, um, which looks like it's closing in on a molt soon, so... That enclosure may be a tad small for this one. I don't really know, but uh, we have those options. And then we have this crazy lunatic here, which uh, is the Cerakopelma rubronitans. The thing with these is you can see how big it already is. Okay, so it's either going to move into the longer or that one. And I really, really think this is definitely a candidate for one of the acrylics uh, instead because the, the speed that they have and the amount of growing that they do that is tremendous. This will be, you know, move the rock right into the other enclosure and uh, just give a little bit more room and give me a little bit more buffer area for when I feed. Then we have this crazy insane blue fuzzball still. The, you know, you can't see it. Well, maybe you can. Is that the tarantula? Yeah, it is right there. This is the um, Promictopus cancerides. Again, picks up size pretty quickly. So, may outgrow that enclosure uh, quicker than what we would want them to. And then we have this guy here, which probably is kind of off the list, because you can see how big this one is already. This one's almost, if not two inches, this is the Pteranopelma sazame, as you can read. Uh, definitely, most likely, we'll, we'll get the upgrade to the acrylic uh, versus this one. So that's what we have. Um, you know, I'd considered maybe the Epibopus rufusens might be a, uh, a candidate for that, but I don't like the uh, hole depth for that one uh, because, it, you know, it does like to burrow. It doesn't have a deep burrow, but I don't know that that's deep enough for it. You know, and I could block some of these off with, I could, you know, hot glue some of these, these holes closed um, or use uh, caulking or whatever you want to call it to... Uh, close some of these holes and you know give it deeper on this side and let it web up but that one also is a candidate for moving into one of the longer ones um, 
just because they are a little bit deeper and I can work a little bit easier with them. So there you have it. So we have uh, Baumgarteni, Ro Rosea, Porteri, um, Hamori, uh, Rubronitans, Cancerides, Sazame, and then the, the ones that you saw in the baseball cubes. Um, and you also have, uh, well, we have also the Hapalopus species called the large and um, what was the other one? The Cerecopelma melanotarsum. Oh, this one's another one. And this one's, I'm, I'm just not quite sure what I want to do with because it went from a burrowing tarantula to now not burrowing at all. Closed off all of its all of its burrowing holes. It's not dug since uh, it closed everything off. This is the Aponopelma moderatum. So, uh, yeah, this is another one that's considerable for that. Um, but I don't know. You can see how large the abdomen is versus the carapace. This guy's looked like this for, I can't tell you how long. I skipped, skipped feeding, skipped feeding, skipped feeding, skipped feeding, and then last month I said, let's try it, and it ate. You know, small cricket, so I was like, oh. It's just not in pre molt yet, but it's closing in on it. So hopefully by the end of summer, this one will actually be nice and bright and uh, have all that beautiful blonde coloring to it. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what everybody says. Um, I would first thought about putting the vinegaroon in there, but I just didn't think that was enough room for the vinegaroon at all. So um, I also actually had thought about putting the hot and tata hot and tata in there before it came in, and I realized how big it actually was. Um, so that one, of course, is in something much bigger. But we also can consider some other things, you know, Kilobrachy species, Cancrochon. I got one that can go in here. The Discalus can go in here. Um, but I prefer something that's not really not going to do much digging. And uh, so those are your choices. What do you guys come up with? It'll be kind of interesting. Um, and let me know. Um, you, you guys know what to do. Bell, whistles, like, dislike, comment, share. Hit me up with a message. Um, and um, happy keeping.